I have joined the dark side because they have cookies. Salutations! Welcome to Loving the Language of Literacy. My name is Sophia Lee and welcome to the very first episode of my journey to the dark side. So if you are new to my channel and you do not already know this, for the past couple of weeks I have been taking writing classes at my local YMCA and that has been an absolute blast. I recently did the end of an era which was the end to my progression in playwriting series which is what I did on the last 10 week session. Last Saturday was the beginning of a brand new session so of course that meant I was switching genres and if you do not pick this up which I would not blame you for between the title and my really weird intro I chose poetry I was to be honest extremely apprehensive and nervous I actually even wrote a poem about why I was nervous to go to poetry yeah that, that that's weird Sophia but it felt kind of like returning back on the first day of school and even though you're not the new kid anymore you're still new to the territory. And of course, I had absolutely nothing to worry about. People in poetry and writing class in general are just amazing and nice and of course all awesome writers, so I had nothing to worry about. I made the decision to switch over to poetry because I had a wonderful time in playwriting, but I really felt that I would first want to broaden my horizons and just spice it up with a different genre. And two, I've always been extremely interested in reading and both writing poetry, so of course I'd want to go and hone into my craft. I have so much to say about my very first poetry class. With the icebreaker intros of the very first session, it was only an hour and a half, and I feel like I've learned and grown so much in that small amount of time. Walking into poetry was like this entirely different world. I've always been with the fiction playwriting people, but poetry is actually off the beaten track in a kind of dimly lit room upstairs. Everyone in the entire class seemed to be so eloquent and talented and intelligent and socially educated and just as expected and what should happen. I have so much to learn. You know when there's this kind of just energy in the room that just changes all the dynamics that used to be there? Well, there is that because in playwriting, the number one thing I would say about it was that it was fun. It was hilarious. We were always busy yelling at each other because of our dramatic scenes. There's that. But then poetry, there's so much more. And poetry is an absolute art. And it is an extremely hard one to master and craft. I'm obviously nowhere near being good at it, but I'm having so much fun. Right off the bat, one of my classmates brought up writer's block and how she'd been kind of having trouble with fiction writing. Georgia, the teacher, said that we shouldn't call it writer's block, that we should pretty much just eliminate the term in general because it's bogus. And what we should really call it is quiet time. And this is such a simple change of just wording. Clichely, changing your outlook on something completely changes it. And writer's block has always been seen as this huge obstacle that you should be trying your best to overcome. But quiet time is just time to let those creative juices stew and it means that you are still a writer and that you are still just as valid as this if you were churning out those pages every single day. Even though I have not written fiction since last November in NaNoWriMo and it's April now, but we're not gonna dwell on the negative. One of my classmates actually brought in this simple sludge sparked this entire conversation and writing prompt and was basically better than any other icebreaker possible. The official product is called Silly Sludge but I'm not sure what else you could describe it as and you really can't. And so we just all passed it around. That was one of the challenges for the day to try your best to describe this icky, gooey mess that was basically slightly solidified but still very liquefied snot. It was just this elusive goo. And there was this terribly damp, moist residue left on your hands afterwards, so that was Silly Sludge, the unexpected beginning of our class. Then we moved on to the actual prompt of the day. We had the Queen of Poetry, as she's dubbed in class, read a sonnet by Terence Hayes, and that is, we sliced the watermelon into smiles. What is so hard to believe is that this sonnet was 14 lines of the same thing, over and over and over 
again. This was a very puzzling way to start off the class as well as an extremely effective one to get the point across of the lesson. And the lesson of the day was repetition. The task was to have one line repeating at least three times with a different connotation each time it showed up in the poem. And this is where I was most mind blown by the people surrounding me in class. Somehow individually all created these wonderful works of art where the repetition was either used as something to start off the poem and to establish what it was about and it just kept being repeated, or it was used in summary of the lines before it, or sometimes it was more about just the idea and the premise of that line being repeated, or even it being just seamlessly woven in so you almost ignored it and were like, where the heck did that line repeat? Any of the ways it was done, it was so effective in getting the author's point across and the power of it was just so tangible while I was in class. There were also lessons for the day on rhyming. I really saw how there could be good rhyme where it was present but it seemed extremely buried and it sometimes wasn't even at the end of the line or verse but just woven into the middle. The context of this assignment you always want to weave in and surprise the reader with the rhyming and you never want it to be predictable like the cat sat on the mat wanting to eat a rat. I've got to admit I was and I still most definitely am intimidated by people in my class because they are quite talented and I'm just so appreciative and just wild that I can be in a class with writers but that make me think about my writing style and my tone and the mood and just make me rethink the very arrangement of words themselves. I will not be sharing my poem mostly because I really need to work on it and develop my own voice as a poet before I be comfortable sharing it on the internet because one of the constructive criticisms I received, which I completely agree with, was the fact that I am a fiction writer at heart. And because of that, my poem was a lot more fictitious and there was most definitely parts of it that could be just whittled down and chopped off purely for the purpose to make it just flow better as a poem overall. I have a few little quirks as a poet that I need to definitely work on. Speakos, which are like typos but just when spoken, and there are definitely lessons that I m want to learn and skills I want to better myself in. But Overall, this was just an amazing, amazing first class. I loved playwriting so much and it was a wonderful experience, but even in this one, one and a half hour session, I learned so much about myself as a writer and I got to just basically sit back and observe all these incredible people in my class. And when I came out of the room, I was just kind of stunned and shell-shocked. The poetry atmosphere in the room itself was just such a sacred environment for us all to say whatever we wanted and voice our own opinions. And that is what writing is supposed to do. And I'm extremely excited about moving forward throughout these weeks in poetry. I make absolutely no promises on how many posts I'll be able to get up and how many videos I'll be able to make pertaining to my journey to the dark side because of summer vacation and I have no idea how many classes I'll actually be able to attend. But I will hopefully put up more than I did on a progression in playwriting and not blame my boyfriend this time around. Anyways, keep calm, read on, and I'll see you in a video soon. Goodbye!